This episode is brought to you by our partnership with Grand Canyon University. Welcome to the Ignite Project, a Polk County Public Schools podcast made for teachers by teachers. Teachers of all experience levels need each other's enthusiasm and passion to fuel an ongoing desire to do what it takes to meet the needs of our students. And that's what this podcast is all about. Be energized by their enthusiasm to ignite a love for teaching while they challenge others to join them in their work. Join us now. Hi, friends. My name is Mallory Williamson, and I'm the Teacher Engagement Coordinator with Polk County Public Schools. And whether you are listening in your car to this or at home doing the dishes or simply grading your lesson plans and your papers from your students, we're so excited that you could just join us for another episode. Um, Today, and we say this about a lot of our guests, but that's because we're really biased about our teachers and educators within Polk County Public Schools. But today, we're really going to hone in on this concept of community and connection. And with that being said, we have Sherry Blackwood in the house. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for having me. You definitely took a very long drive from Davenport. Yes. You are a teacher at Citrus Ridge Civics Academy. So um, long drive, but like I said, good stuff to talk about today. So I'm excited. Me too. Um, Letting the audience know a little bit about yourself. You were born in Jamaica. You were from Brooklyn um, and Queens, New York, which I love. Um, Giving a little bit of background, I'm like Florida girl, born and raised. I know nothing about big cities, so that was really exciting. Um, And what I also love is that you got your bachelor's in history and paralegal studies. So for everybody listening, that's a non-education major right there. And you pursued your master's in secondary education. And from there, you started teaching. So it's been, what, 11 years? Yes. Yeah. And so six years at Citrus Ridge, Yes. which I want to talk about that because that's a big deal. You like started opening the school, didn't you? Yes, I did. And um, we've come a long way. It's been a long journey, but love it there. That's my home. Yeah. I plan to stay there as long as I can. I, I can't imagine what it's like. And I, we have a couple schools this year, Davenport High, Bella Cita, Willow Oak. They were kind of like, they're now experiencing what you've experienced. So tell me a little bit about that, like feeling of being a part of history, but you're opening up a school with all completely new staff members. Well, opening up the new school was, it was difficult because, you know, some of the construction wasn't done, <laughs> you know, and everyone is coming in brand new. Yeah. So it was, we had to learn to become a team and that was huge, um, working together. But I was, I actually started off teaching and reading. Okay. And so um, when I started off in reading, um, it was out of my comfort zone because I'd always been social studies. And the team that I was on, it was like, wow, that team was amazing. And they really integrated me into that school and uh, helped me through that first year. And they just set the pace for what I'm on right now. I love that because I think everybody knows we're new here and we're so excited about this like brand new school. You know, you got the like light, the little trickle sparkle in the eyes and everyone's just like doughy eyed (laughs) and they're so excited to be on par with every everybody. But I think like what you hit on, everybody's personality is a little bit different and you're all like immersing yourself together all at once. Exactly. And so what I'd like to kind of hit on today is, you know, your school wanted to like spark this focus on community and connection. And why did they really decide to think outside the box for this like culture aspect of things? All right. So when we started off, you know, over the years, we've had like up close to a 2000 kids. Oh, in the that's school. a lot of kids. Yeah. So it's a lot. And we're like the first K-8 here in Polk yeah. County. And so we needed to build a culture where all our students felt like one big family, not two separate schools with elementary and middle. And so we decided to come up with a house system. Okay. And so with this house system, it was to get the kids to buy in to enjoying and being in school and to actually build relationship with those students and then their families. 
And then from there, we incorporate the community into our school. So the house system was like a fantastic idea um, that they came up with. So this house system, like, was it you guys' idea or where did it originate from? Okay, so, well, our principal, Dr. Leatherwood, um, I guess, and her team came up with the idea. And so what we did was, for those of you, the house system is like, if you ever watch Harry Potter <laughs> and you see Gryffindor and uh, Slytherin, it's kind of like that. Yeah. So we, once a student comes in, they're randomly put into a house. And um, when it started off, they took about 12 teachers and they came up with the structure of this house system. But what they did was incorporated all of the staff. Okay. And we voted on heads of house. We voted on the colors. We voted on the um, the names and, um, and our symbol, what our symbol mm-hmm. would be. So, like, my house is the House of Courage. And yeah. so our school gave us this lanyard, if everybody could see this lanyard. <laughs> and so the staff, we have a lanyard representing our house. So my house is the Purple House, the House of Courage. Or our symbol is the lion. Yes. And our house leader is Rosa Parks. Okay. So the different houses. So we have the House of Influence, um, House of, we have House of Courage, Influence, um, Innovation, Mm -hmm. which is Walt Disney is their leader. That's awesome, of course, (laughs) of all people. Right. And their their, symbol is the light bulb. Okay. Yes. (laughs) Okay. So we have House of Influence, Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. Dr. Martin Luther King is theirs. So. As we go, House of Courage and um, Generosity. Mm. So the students are in their houses, and we usually have house days where we meet as an entire group. So from kindergarten to eighth grade, yes, we have house meetings, and we eat together as a house. So you're not just building a family with, like, your grade level, or it's just, you know, that typical elementary island, middle school island, but it is everyone... No matter the grade level, no matter the student, no matter the staff, right. if you're in that house, you are family. It right. is that family mentality. Exactly. I love that. And it helps with our, you know, discipline, that PBIS, you mm. know, it strengthened that. So, yeah. So tell me a little bit more about that. Let's um, kind of hone in on how has this house system truly impacted the culture on your school campus? We know that at first it is exciting, like anything that's new right. and you get to like any school spirit. I'm so competitive with sports. So I'm like, if my team is playing, I'm going to wear their jersey. I'm going to wear the face paint. I'm going to be super spirited about it. But really down to the nitty gritty, how has that impacted your campus? Um, it's really helped with behavior. It's helped um, with our academics also. And and so what it does is we have a reward, a point system. Okay. So if a teacher sees a student from generosity or from influence or innovation and that student's doing a good deed, they're helping another student or they're engaged in the classroom, yeah. you can award that house points. Okay. Because at the end, there is a house cup. Oh. <laughs> and you win the house cup. So everybody wants to win everybody that. Everybody wants okay. to win the house cup. Yes. So, so there's a lot of buy-in. So there's a huge a lot of buy-in. Amount. Yes. Um, so can the students personally earn points and then the team can earn points kind yes. of thing? So everybody's contributing. Exactly. Which is that community aspect of things. Mm-hmm. Did you feel like in the beginning that, you know, without this house system, eventually Citrus Ridge would have gotten there? Or do you think this completely like transformed that school mentality? I think this helped to transform our school mentality. I think it would have taken us a longer time to get there to where we are right now had we gone the typical traditional route. But this really brought the camaraderie quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you come to our school on a given day, you'll see the kids in their house shirts, the colors. You see the different uh, colors from the house shirts along with their uniform shirts. So the kids are even buying by even purchasing their house colors. Okay, so they get to buy that gear. Yes. So how has the family involvement in this? Um, so parents also buy in with their, you know, with the house system too. Yeah. So um, we usually hold, you know, it's been a hard, let me back up. It's been a hard year yeah. with us being quarantined. So we haven't been able to do the events that we usually do. Because they're so close together. There's so many kids in one area. Exactly. So yeah, explain a little bit more about that during this time. Like how are you able to maintain that even during such a challenging year in the prior year? So it was difficult and we 
really, um, it wasn't pushed as much because half of our students were quarantined at home. Right. So now this year we're getting back into pushing forward the house system again, okay. especially for our new students who are just coming in. And we have a lot moving from up north down yeah. here. And so it's trying to get them all embodied into this house to buy into this house system. Right. And so now we're starting over and getting back into getting the kids on track with their points. And, you know, we have other um, incentives that we give them too. Yeah. Along with the house system is, you know, we have Rocky dollars and they uh, can end, awesome. they end, they earn these Rocky dollars and they're able to go into our PBIS store and purchase items. Okay. So again, the house system too, um, they earn the points for their houses and at the same time earning dollars for themselves that they can reward themselves at okay. some point. And I think when you're thinking about a school coming from this, you know, I worked at a school that did not have a house system and there was a culture that was already pre-established. And so sometimes when you're walking into a new school, somebody might get this philosophy or idea or misconception that you're brand new. No one knows each other. So it's a lot easier to start something fresh off the bat. Yeah. Or somebody could be at a workplace or a school where there's always been this mentality of this is what we've always done. So you need to do that as well. But you know, there's this this need for a positive culture, this family mentality, this like igniting of a passion. Mm -hmm. um, and so how can a teacher possibly start this at their school? What would be a good place to start? Um, look at, look at their data. Okay. Look at, look at the data. See, um, what's going on with your school? Um, is it, a is behavior issues going on mm -hmm. or is a morale low? Oh. Get your staff to buy in by, Presenting this to them, we're going to try to uh, build an environment where we're inclusive of everyone. Yeah. And so once they start looking at all those data, then they could start deciding how many houses, because you don't want it to be too big. Right. It, this is a big system. It gets yeah. overwhelming. And it there's so be. many p parts and pieces it that is. one person cannot do it no. by themselves. <laughs> so if you get the staff to buy in like how our school did where we got involved and the staff is choosing the colors and so forth. Yeah, I love if that. If you get the staff to buy in, then it's easier to get the students to buy in because we are on board and when we meet together, we're pumped up and we're yeah. riled, you know, so we get the kids all riled up and ready to go. And so, as I said, look at the data, see what your needs are, okay. and then make sure that when you're building this house system, you're incorporating those needs in it. Yeah. Because then what would be the point? Right. You don't want to do this and have it fizzle out or it doesn't carry no. a purpose because exactly. your house system has carried a deep purpose and building that positive connection with families and your students versus your staff and building that unity. And so what I'm hearing you say is create some sort of, you know, presentation to your admin mm -hmm. if possible. Um, also contact schools that already have house have systems, right? right? Get their buy-in, get their advice. They've been doing it for years like Citrus Ridge. Right. What is worked? Because what is it's not. Yeah, call it Sherry. Sherry, call <laughs> Sherry. <laughs> and I've also heard today alone is so crazy. Highlands Grove started one too. So I'm oh, like, okay, awesome. we, we can start something here. Yeah. Um, so I love it. Just making sure you have a buy-in for your staff and having a purpose for it. Absolutely. So Sherry, we always ask our guests the same question and it's our favorite question to ask. So no pressure. If you could pick one thing in education to really spark change and ignite a shift in behavior and mindsets, what would that be? So I want to ignite what? Okay. So I would like to ignite change within my, with my parents. Um, I I've that. always wanted to have a program that brings in a ESOL program in the evening for parents. Mm -hmm. Get them involved, more involved in what's happening at school. I think a lot of times um, they may feel left out outside of a phone call. Hey, your son or daughter is right. not doing so well. But more of, hey, we're here to help you build and build resources for them. Come in. We're going to help you to learn the language. Or if you need some help with literacy, we can help you um, with job uh, findings, resources for yeah. jobs. 
um, for the families that don't have a job. I know it's not the typical educational aspect, <laughs> but this is the where I have a passion for. I love it. It matters. Yes. Because I think that goes from your house system. You have been integrated at Citrus Ridge where you have been a part of opening this school. You've watched it grow tremendously with the connections between staff members, um, understanding your kids and what their needs are. And so now it is almost a normal shift to have a desire with parents. And I think you're right. As a previous educator, there is such a lacking of outside of the classroom. We get so focused because there's so much going on. And what does that look like? What does that feel like for a parent? And so I love it. I'm in support of it. So anyway, we can support you with that. But and I love that you said it's not the typical educational answer, but sometimes we need the not so typical, the out of the box to really cause this like igniting of or re-sparking of something. And so yes. I appreciate you sharing that, even oh, if it's awesome. not your typical answer. Yeah. <laughs> I try. So thank you again for coming and sharing um, your passion about these house systems. And like yes. we said, Sherry is your girl. So <laughs> contact her. She'll tell you all about it. All right. Are you fired up? You can continue to fuel the fire by connecting with us here in teacher engagement. Every month we host virtual all teacher seminars and we also have ongoing programs designed to support teachers wherever they're at in their teaching career. Whether you're a new teacher or a teacher leader, there is a way to get plugged in. Follow us on social media at, at @teachengagepcps to see all that we have going on. Let's keep that spark alive and join forces with others who have chosen to stay ignited. Thanks for joining us. You can subscribe to the Ignite Project on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify, or watch online at the Polk County Public Schools YouTube channel. To learn more about the Ignite Project and other Polk County Public School podcasts, go to polkschoolsfl.com forward slash podcasts.